it's expense is going to be related to salaries. Uh, and, and so this happened, this happens um, periodically, and, and, and we are a small economy. So size of the economy does constrain us. Um, if you think about it, if you, if you live in a country like the States, there are so many opportunities. Um, you unfortunately want to leave. Um, let me say, unfortunately, um, get kicked out of a job. There are so many other opportunities um, if you live in a large society like the States. Uh, you know, we tend to also have an inflation. And because of that, that's a challenge for us to be able to save. Obviously, we want to earn more than the prices are going up so that we can save. And sometimes when we get our increases, they are, are, are not as high as the cost of living. And so we are challenged in terms of saving. So there are some challenges. And I spoke already about government policy. One of the policy that government has been adopted over the past, I would think about five to six years is to reduce its, its, its cost for those loans that they have gotten over the years. And if, if, if the government chooses to spend its earning on reducing its debt, which is actually a good thing, um, it has less to spend on infrastructure, on social amenities. And so the, the overall economy, it doesn't grow as we would like it to be. And growth in the economy is what give us opportunities. So there are several challenges, but we have to also look at as how we can overcome these challenges, eh? Because the challenges are always gonna be there. Um, so one of the advice I always give is that we should look to go into business ventures um, so you are final year students now, and I think most of you who may not be thinking of going to do your, your second degree may be thinking of, most of you will be thinking of getting a job right after uh, graduation. <clears throat> I want you to, to think about what kind of business opportunities you can engage in. And again, you'll be challenged by the size of the society, but there are reasons why you want to get into your own business. Over the past 12 years, and I have it on, on a slide, 11 years, what we have noticed is that interest rates have consistently been going down. No, this, that's the time when you want to borrow to go into your little business because the cost of managing the business, that's the cost of fund, the interest rate which you are paying is low. So, so, so from the can manager cost side, it's easy to go into business. The second reason why I want you to think about your own business is the upside. When I speak of upside, I have been working now for approximately 30 years. So the maximum I can earn is what the board of directors decide that they will give to me. Um, irrespective of how well the organization is being led, there's a cap to which I will earn and that is what the board of directors will decide to give to me. It, it could be very good, you know, but it's, it's, that's the optimum. Whereas, it, whereas if I had said 15, 20 years ago, okay, um, I'm in the financial sector, but let me also look at what business opportunities I can advance myself in. The upside to that is that everything from that business is mine. There is no limit 
to what I can earn whilst the business is doing well. Whereas when I'm employed, there is a cap because the board of directors will say, irrespective of how well you're doing, Elvis, you will not get more than X amount. You should think about consolidating your debts as quickly as possible. I'm sure some of you will have student loans. And when you started studying, student loan may have been lending you at 12%. No interest rates may be, depending on the organization and what collateral you may be able to provide, um, you may be able to get it at 7 or 6.5. The point I'm making here is that with interest rates trending down, it's always better to consolidate debts because rather than keep those loans at higher rates, it's better to get an institution now to take care of all of those debts at a lower rate and you reduce your cost. Because as I said in the first slide, what you have to do is minimize your cost. The cost of borrowing is interest rate. So if it is that organizations are able to now lend you at lower rates to save. The other thing that I want you to always do is look at your monthly expenses with a view to cut back on anything. Because um, again, the, the, the task is, ladies and gentlemen, how much you can minimize your costs so that you have more to save. So um, maybe parties and movies, entertainment are, are being restricted now. As soon as you start earning, um, which I'm hoping will be in the next 12 months, um, as soon as, or, or 10 months, as soon as you finish that last exam, um, minimize your costs, don't think too much about, um, I'm sure by, I'm hoping that by then um, entertainment is well on its way again, but we want to minimize those costs so that we can have enough to save. Um, I spoke earlier about um, interest rates. And as you can see from this slide, um, 2010, or interest rates, 90-day T-bills rates, to really just give you a, a feel for interest rates in the economy, um, was at 6.93. Um, at the end of August of this year, it's at 0.88%. So I want to reiterate the two things I said just now. One is that if you have loans at higher interest rates, you want to consolidate those loans now. Um, the other thing about this is that a number of financial institutions want you to borrow. And because they want you to borrow, they have to be consistently, we have to be consistently reducing our interest rates for, for to attract more borrowers. So it's a very good time. And again, you want to borrow when interest rates are low to go into investment so that you minimize your cost, at least your, your borrowing costs. Some minor things that I always, always advise um, in overcoming some of the challenges in, in minimizing costs. Um, turn off the lights in the rooms when you're not in there. These minor things, unplug the television, the stereos, um, making sure that you're not giving funds to um, our power suppliers, um, JPS, which is unnecessary. So every cent that you save from having to pay out, you have that to, to save. I also talk about carpooling, when you're going out, um, rather than all of you driving, think about um, carpooling. Um, 
um, look for water drips and make sure that you correct them quickly so that everything that you can save costs, you minimize those costs um, with the view of, of having more funds available to you to um, save. Um, wash the car yourself. And I, and I say here that it also helps as part of your exercise. Um, walk to the mall. I mean, just some simple things. Um, instilling the children the value of conserving and, and not only instilling them, reward them so that they grow up um, conserving. Everything that is done is being done so that you have a little more resources at your disposal so that you can, can save. So throughout the presentation, you're going to hear me talk about creating wealth means maximizing your income, minimizing your costs, put away funds. That is the only way you're going to create wealth. One of, one, of, one of the things that we always do, so I spoke earlier about inflation and prices rising. Um, we, we, we get our income at the end of each month and we put away, let's say we put away some and we take care of the expenses and we have some for entertainment. Um, Cost goes up a little, and the funds that we we want to maintain, at least we have to we have to keep the lights running. We have to pay our rent or our mortgage, and so less is there after you have taken care of the basic necessities. What we tend to do is, rather than maintain savings, we tend to continue with things like the entertainment side. And I'm, and, and I'm encouraging you guys, when you do your budget, if you see where cost has gone up, your income has not moved, you were saving $10,000 per month. Um, when you take out the, the, the expenses that you have no control over, you find that um, $20,000 is left. You normally have $10,000 for entertainment and $10,000 for savings. Um, this month, you're down to $17,000. Don't try and save seven. Keep your $10,000 savings and reduce the entertainment by As soon as you start earning reductions, um, I urge you to start this very early reduction is that you don't see action. Also, make sure that your employer, and, and I, I haven't forgotten that I said that you should go into your own business as much as possible. But I'm sure that some of you will be employed um, in the private, in the public sector. Um, when you ask for these salary reductions to be done, don't ask for it to be placed in an account that you have easy access to it. Um, because if you do, you're gonna just go to the machine and use it. Or if it's on the card, you're just you're likely to just spend it anyway. Put it away somewhere where it's a bit difficult to get. Um, um, with millennials, most of you are. I'm sure um, you are not gonna want to go to a financial institution more than maybe to, to, to start the account. And if everything can be done online, I'm sure that's the way you're gonna also do it. Um, so if the funds are placed in, a, in an account that you don't have a debit card and it's not easily transferred, then it's better for you. Um, because you're not going to have access to it easily, um, because you have to maybe go into the financial institution 
um, the tendency is for you to say, um, let it stay because it's too, too much of an asset. I always think of your long-term plan. So um, I expect that immediately um, you get a job, you'll be thinking about your car, you'll be thinking about your house. Um, stick to those plans. And those plans definitely require some discipline. So you can't just say, well, this month I'm gonna spend more than I had um, and save less. Um, because that is going to affect the long-term plan. So, so financial management is also about time management. Um, and we, we say time is our most precious commodity, so we should use it wisely. And if you think about time um, to know how valuable it is, um, think about the guy who stood up by his date. Um, one millisec millisecond, think about the guy who ran close second in the Olympics. So we talk about time. And when we talk about time, we want to always recognize the importance of time. So let me just go into the importance again of time and share with you how, how you should look at being disciplined and, and look at time over the long, medium to long term. So if you make bad decision, plus your discipline with it. Um, this is like a regimentation without reward. You get up each morning um, and you, uh, the example I normally use here is those guys who get up each morning and roll in their, their thumb in their hands, um, building their splits. And, and that's a discipline that they have over a considerable amount of time. But, 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 but it's a bad decision. So you have a bad decision plus a discipline which is consistent. Um, that is really regimentation without, without reward. The flip side is that you make a good decision, but you don't have the discipline. So you say to yourself that in five years time, I want to save 2.5 million dollars um, because when I'm ready to buy my house, I want to be able to have my down payment um, so that the mortgage institution will readily um, lend me that other 95% or whatever. Um, so you have made that decision, very good decision. That decision requires, however, that you save $20,000 per month for example, but if you're not doing it, it's a, it's a plan without a payoff. So you have a good plan, but it won't pay off because you don't have the discipline. Um, obviously, if you make the right decision and you're disciplined, the, the reward is success. So I implore you to make early right decisions, be disciplined, and the reward is obviously gonna be success. So um, you're gonna hear it over and over, guys. F financial planning is about planning, making the right decisions early, be disciplined in your actions, and the result is success. All right, so in goal setting and planning, what you want to do is look at where you are now. Right now, um, final year students, um, hopefully in, in the next eight to 10 months, I pick up a job. Um, that this is where you are now. And the second question you're gonna ask yourself 
where do you want to be in X years? Um, so in X years, um, from a financial perspective, um, you could be saying that you're gonna spend the next two years to do your second degree. Um, that's part of the planning process. Um, but in five years, I want to come out of my parents' house. And even though I'm saying this now, I want to also um, encourage you not to rush out of the parents' house uh, because while you're in there, you can do more savings than when you're not in there. So also bearing that in mind. But in your planning, you must have a time frame that you're gonna say, okay, um, after a period of time, you, you're gonna come out of there. So I say don't rush it, but I'm also saying that you don't intend to stay in there forever. Um, in this plan, this plan requires that I can be independent from a perspective of driving my own car or maybe start renting um, um, in a few years to and then go towards um, um, purchasing later. Um, so you, where you are now, where do you want to be in a few years? And then you say to yourself, what do you need to, to do now in order to get there? And, and I always say to, 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 to team members, to persons who I have to speak to, that we should start now, uh, make sure that we do not procrastinate. Procrastinating gets us nowhere. Um, why now and why financial literacy? Um, financial literacy um, helps us to manage your risk. Um, so guys, um, we, we encourage you, uh, given that you're so young, that you can take a little more risk. Um, generally, the more risk you take, the greater the reward, but of course, the downside is that you may also lose your socks. Um, and I'm saying that the younger we are, we take these risks and we do that because obviously we can recover. Um, when you reach to my age, um, you have to manage those risks more um, because there's much time to recover. Um, that, that should be quite obvious. We also encourage diversification, meaning that you don't want to put your eggs in, in, in one basket. So if you, for example, decide that you're going to go in the stock market, um, you want to put your funds in more than one institution so that um, if, uh, and one industry, more than one institution, more than one industry so that if one industry is not doing well, then the other may be doing better and you're, you're able to manage the returns that you're, you're getting. Um, the financial literacy assists us in financial prudence, um, what I've been talking about all afternoon. Spend less, discipline um, in saving. You, you want to also know much about financing, financial literacy, because you want to also be able to manage your debt. And I spoke earlier about when interest rates are going down, you want to consolidate debts. When interest rates are going up, if you have loans, you just stay put. Um, the interest rates are going up, so you stay with the interest rate that you have now. Um, on the converse, if interest rates are going down, you want to consolidate those debts. <clears throat> you also want to manage your taxes. Some instruments um, require, um, allow you to minimize taxes. Um, so the, the less you, you give to the government, the more you have to put towards your savings. So if you, have instruments, um, more, more, more like the five-year instruments that you can put away funds for, that is obviously later when you start earning and have funds. You, you want to put away as much for a longer period, minimize those taxes so that you also can get more to save. So 
So again, creating wealth is all about spending less. Maximizing your earning as much. I want you to, to, to think about retirement, which could be forty years from now. Years from now, but it, um, so what you're gonna find is um, the part of the offer that you, um, and they ask you to to match it. You don't have to match it, but I encourage you to maximize the amount that you put away and start that very early, and you do so so that later on um, when you get to retirement you are not dependent on society to help you, but you are independent throughout your working life and also independent um, in retirement. Um, I, I, I touched on this in the first slide, um, goal setting, um, uh, reaching for the star. Um, so your goals must be time bound so you say to yourself, in five years, now it's 2021, 20, in 2026, I want to achieve X. So it's specific. In 2026, I want to, my savings to be at $2.5 million. It has to be achievable, meaning that you don't want to say that this requires that I put away $100,000 per month. But when you look at your salary, you can only put away fifty. dollars thousand dollars it must be achievable um and of course realistic uh realistic from the perspective that you can afford it and certainly achievable <clears throat> so i want you to ask yourself the question what are you investing in um and when i say what are you investing in in now i'm saying to you you could be investing in entertainment meaning that you could be investing in clothes. Always ask yourself, what are you investing in? Sure enough, all of you on this call is investing in your education. What else are you investing in? And is there as to something you can benefit from in the future? So education, absolutely. Um, and, and entertainment is, is extremely important because we have to have that social life to, 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 to live, but um, we, we must be, make sure that our priorities are consistent with our goals so that if we have set a goal that in five years time, um, we are go I'm going to be able to have $2.5 million towards that house. Um, if every month, we are spending $20,000 out of that amount that we should be saving, then obviously we are not going to achieve that goal. Um, again, entrepreneurship, um, 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 encouraging entrepreneurship, of course it's risky, but the, the, it has a, the highest possible return. Um, and again, the younger the better. Um, no limit on your earning. Um, um, do your analysis. Um, think interest rate. Um, think market. Do your projections and look at your best and worst case scenarios before you go into your entrepreneurship investment into entrepreneur. Um, and be practical about what you can possibly lose before you lose your head. Basically, what I'm saying here is that um, don't go in blind, um, given that you may lose. Um, nothing is guaranteed. They said the only two things that are guaranteed are debt and taxes. So 
even though the opportunities may look so well, you have to also look on the downside. Um, if I lose this investment, if I put these funds in this investment and I don't succeed, what? Um, you don't want to lose every single thing that you have. So there are some um, instruments that will not pay you much because the risks are low. So your regular saving account, you just want to keep funds in this account for transaction. Um, so you know you have the bills to pay each month um, and a little is there for entertainment. That's all you will keep in your regular savings account. Um, in fixed deposit, this is gonna pay a little more return. So you put away funds, you have some lump sum and you put away funds over a period of time. Um, low risk and return is a little higher because these are funds that you have given to the financial institution and you say to them, you're not coming back for it until X time. As a result, they can give you a better return. I did talk already about um, youth versus mature. Um, we want to minimize our risk as we get older, uh, in, in, your young, in your younger days, as you all are, you can take a little more risk. Some medium to long-term instruments um, in the financial institutions, I'm sure most of you would have heard um, Oh, that, that the next slide will speak a little more to that. Medium term at credit unions, we have what is called Wealth Creator Executive Plus. Um, at my credit union, also, we have uh, different shares often now. Um, you can also invest in bonds, and, and bonds could be government bonds or institutional bonds, and that's just government offering or institution offering some fixed instrument that will pay you a fixed or variable interest rate over a period of time. Um, the fixed interest rate instruments are better now because interest rates are going down. You don't want to go into variable interest rates because what they will do is, these some institutions do is start you at a good rate and say that, you will get like uh, 100 basis points or one percentage point above the T-bill rate after a year or after two years. And I spoke about the T-bill rate earlier. And so if you start the investment today at 6.5% and it, it becomes a variable rate after a year, all they're gonna be paying you is, let's say the interest rate remains at 0.88, they will be paying you 1.88%, even though you would have started at 6.5%. Um, so we encourage you, when interest rates are going down, again, um, get into, uh, into fixed rate instruments, um, which are more likely to pay you better in the long term. Most of us would have have known about DNS squishment, NCBs Omni, those are medium term saving instruments. Um, think about how much you can save in these instruments over the medium to long term stocks. Always encourage um, persons to go into stocks. It is a bit riskier, less liquid, but over the long term, it gives you a, a good return. And again, with your youth, um, this is something that you always want to consider. In choosing stocks, make sure that you look at organizations that have, have been growing. Um, there are also some, some, some emerging institutions that you can look at. I, I spoke about diversification earlier again. So if your portfolio has some companies that are emerging, some companies that are growing and, uh, mat and mature companies, then you are well diversified. Uh, the tendency a lot of times is to just jump into the em emerging um, companies because you see some potential in them. Um, but again, 
we don't know what the future holds. So, and so you want to diversify so that you minimize, again, you minimize the risk. Um, in going to, into the stock market, you want to look at the companies, look at their cash flows, um, look at the investment opportunities that um, they ha are going into, look at their past performances, look at their dividend policy, um, which really is how much they pay out um, to, to um, shareholders at the end of each year. Um, um, the critical thing is that you earn in two ways from stocks. One is that you get a dividend and the appreciation of the stock in terms of its price. So you want to go into companies that are doing well. The companies that are doing well, their stocks will reflect that they're doing well. So you can buy a stock for, 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 for $40 and in a year time, it's at 70. Um, your, your stock price would have appreciated, you will have earned there. And also most likely at the end of the year, um, you'll be getting also dividends. So you earn two ways. Um, I have a quote there that the only adequate preparation for the future is the right use of today. Um, so I'm always encouraging persons um, to make sure that they are not procrastinating, make the decisions early. Insurance, um, you want to also um, take out insurance as early as possible. Make sure that you take out policies that have some form of investment component. And you take out life insurance because you want to, to minimize the, the, the cost for anything that happens family, anything that happens in the family. You, you don't want to leave any strain on the persons who you may live here. And already I spoke about pension. Um, you want to make sure that you maximize the amount that the company allows you to put towards this um, because you're, you, you, you benefit in the long run also from a tax benefit. So there are maybe about three more slides. Um, so time is almost precious commodity. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, you must use it wisely. Um, um, if you make a mistake, you may be able to correct it. Lost time will never return. And, and I'm sure that some of you would have recognized this in even your studies. I mean, I, I, I remember back in the days when I was studying, um, there are a lot of times I would, I would procrastinate and say, okay, well, exam is, is, is four weeks from now. Um, I, I don't need to start until two weeks too. And then when I see the amount of material that I have to go through, I wish I had two weeks before. Um, so lost time will never return. Be cognizant of that. <clears throat> so we cannot change time, only our priorities. And I spoke earlier about making sure that you're making the right decisions, make them early and be consistent. A set number of days, hours in a day, week, month, we can choose what we do in those hours. Um, Time will change the number of hours. Um, priorities help us choose wisely. So uh, I, I, my final slide here, I, I just want to, to wrap up with what I want you to take away. And you're gonna see the same things that I have been, um, I've alluded to early. Make decisions early. Make decisions early, ladies and gentlemen, because you don't want to look back and say, if only I had done so earlier. Be consistent, disciplined. Um, when you make those decisions, don't deviate from them. There may be instances, um, something comes up one month that totally unplanned. You may have a family that is in some crisis and you want to help. Those things will happen, but I want you to be consistent, be disciplined in your action. action. 
I acknowledge that creating wealth is the opposite of being a, a heavy spender. So if you, if you earn a lot and you spend a lot, you're not going to create wealth because there's nothing put away to save. And as I've been continuously say, saying, start now, do not procrastinate. Um, acknowledge the importance of time. I close there and take your questions, um, if there are any. Um, so let me go back to... Um, so if there are any questions, um, I'm going to chat to see if there's any. Okay. Um, normally when I finish presenting, I would normally say if there are no questions, then I've done an extremely good job. Um, so tell me this afternoon that I've not done so well by asking a few questions. If you don't ask me any questions, then I'm just gonna be here thinking that I'm, I'm so good. I can't be so good. Um, Chat. Sir, what do you think? Oh, uh, Mr. King, you're hearing me? I'm hearing you now. Okay, so I'm. I'm okay. Um, can you find out interest? Oh, the interest rates. All right, so I can see the questions. I'm, uh, um, so I'm going to start with where can you find out the interest rates? So interest rates, you 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 are going to speak to your financial institutions. Um, invariably you can go on, on the websites of any financial institution and they will, be, they will, will have interest rates. You, you, again, I know that most of us are just into our phones to get all the information, but also you may want to have a conversation with more than one institution to find out what their rates are. And when we talk about interest rates here, it could be interest rates, um, the borrowing rate or the, or the saving rate. Um, call around and find out what the best rates are if you are gonna borrow. You want to make sure that those rates are extremely low. Um, if you are investing, then you want to make sure that the rates that you're investing at are the higher rates. Hope that helps. So what do you think are the best investments to make? All right, so, so the best investments are where you can find a product or service that one is not readily available and is not easily copied. So that's when you go into your own business. If you can find things that certainly is in demand, not readily copied. And so obviously there's a market for it. Then that's, that's a good way to invest. If you're just talking about um, having funds and ready to put them away to invest, then I'll have to encourage you to go to the stock market. Um, we have been doing extremely well in Jamaica over the past um, five years. In fact, in fact, I think 2019, no, it's 2021. I think 2019, our stock market did, was, was the best in the world in terms of returns. So that's one area that you can go into um, and do some investment. Um, somebody asked me that question this morning and I also said to him that putting, putting away funds in, in hard currency does also help. Guys, it's sort of a two-edged sword because we know that our dollar continues to depreciate. So when we put away funds in, and, and just leave it to earn over a period of time, we do earn from foreign exchange, um, putting away funds in foreign exchange. The flip side is that we don't want to the dollar to depreciate because when the dollar depreciates, 
we all can suffer from it as a society um, because it costs us more to do our regular business because we are so dependent on the external environment to live. Um, and as such, our dollar depreciates easily because we have to buy so much things abroad to, to, to survive. So sort of a two-edged sword, but um, putting away funds in the stock market, in the in the in US currencies also also. Do you have any advice for a person who wants to invest in real estate? Certainly, that's that's a very good area also. In fact, um, thank you for all asking that question because I really should have also said real estate is one area. Generally, in our society, real estate, um, properties, real estate, you always earn from that. Um, and in fact, if you look around uh, at what is happening, especially in the corporate in corporate um, area, you'll find that a lot of investment is in townhouses. And what persons are doing actually you know, is buying lots, even with houses on them, hitting them down and then building up these townhouses. And then um, in, in two years, their returns are like uh, 400%, 500% based on the year. Sir, what is your opinion on cryptocurrency? So I'm not so I'm not so um, versed on cryptocurrency. That's extremely that's an extremely good question, and and I don't spend a lot of time on cryptocurrency. And maybe and maybe the reason is because I, I don't expect it to play a significant part in our society as yet. So. Um, I've gone to a number of seminars and uh, cryptocurrency is, is, a, is a constant topic um, in these seminars, but because I don't expect it to, to play a substantial part in our society right now, I don't pay a lot of attention to it. Um, uh, the person who asks that though, um, I'm gonna ask, uh, Matthew, to 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 take the information from Miss Grant, uh, um, Tavani. I hope that I pronounced that correctly, and I'm I'm gonna have a discussion with you um, after um, sometime to talk about cryptocurrency. Um, cause it's easy for me to to look at it and speak to it, but I don't pay a lot of attention to it right now. There's a question from Ms. Kelly further up in the chat. Read the slides for your presentation. Um, um, is that, I did not see that question. Is it that you're asking for the slides? Well, I, well if you say, well, I'm just assuming that you're gonna be, you're asking for the slides. Um, I generally don't give, give the slides um, because I don't want you put a lot of work in this and you really don't want persons to actually copy it. And, and I'm not saying that you as student will, but, but, but from the moment you, you, you get it out, then you don't know, have any control over it. Um, what I'll say to the person though, is that again, um, Matthew, if there are specific things that persons want me to elaborate on, um, just please free to share my email with them so that they can talk to me further on some of the things. But I generally don't, don't share this slide simply because um, I think persons, and, and again, I'm not speaking to you, but the, the mere fact it goes out, I have no more control over it and others will then be using the, the material which I've done so much work. Um, I don't see any more questions. I don't know if I've missed any. Um, so I'm going to wrap up here. Guys, it has been really a pleasure um, being with you this afternoon. Um, let me again apologize for the, the start that we had. Um, we, it didn't go as smooth as 
we all would have wanted it to, to be, but we know with technology, these things happen. Um, you must be having some of these issues yourself. Um, we hope to get back to the days of pre-March 2020, when we would be in an auditorium um, now or in, in one of your lecture rooms and you'd be able to see your friends more often and, and see who is speaking to you in flesh. Um, I, I want to just wish you all the best in your final year studies. Um, those of you who have additional questions, um, um, Matthew will provide the information to you so you can um, send me emails. I, I prefer if you do emails than messages um, because I, I think I'm on my email more than I'm on my phone messages. That's the opposite maybe to you, but that's how I am. So all the best guys, wishing you all the best. Stay safe. Um, always remember that COVID is still happening in our society. All the best. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, sir. Have a good day. Uh, Matthew, Matthew still having problem? Matthew, I'm sure your colleagues would want you to close off. Uh, yes, I'm back now. Oh, good. All right. Um, all right. Thank you, Mr. King, for your presentation. Um, most thank you, as always, for taking time out of your busy schedule. And thank you as well for taking the time to impart to our students. And as well, anyone who's interested in making contact with Mr. King, you can email uh, the email. Well, my email is posted in the chat. It's placement at utech.edu.jm. You can send me an email and I will provide you with Mr. King's email address. And another reminder as well to everyone to sign the register and the evaluation. They are posted in the chat. All right, and that's it for today's session. Okay, guys, bye everyone. Take care, all the best. Can bye, you send the evaluation? Resend the register in the chat. I'm not seeing it. <laughs>